Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth and final webinar for Digital Marketing Analytics, a short course presented by IT Masters on behalf of Charles Sturt University. My name is Guy Coward and I'll be your MC and your mentor of course is Alicia Booth. Before we begin, the usual housekeeping, we encourage questions and the use of chat during our webinars. Um, we ask that you direct all questions relevant to the course content uh, to the Q&A section and that if you have any administration type questions, send them to the support team in chat. Leif and Rebecca are here as usual. We'll have Q&A sessions periodically, uh, or if a question is particularly relevant uh, to the slide that we're on, I'll interrupt Alicia. Any questions about the exam, I ask that you hold them till the end. We'll, have a, we'll cover that really thoroughly at the end of the, the session. Um, we'll, we'll show you sort of what the next steps are, whether it's just for this short course or for the paid study. No guest lecturers this time. It's all Alicia to take us through to the finish of the course, which is exciting. Hello, Alicia. Thanks as ever for joining us. Hello. Hi, everyone. What have we got today? Uh, we're jam packed today, um, and we're also going to get you uh, ready for the exam, which is um, really exciting, multiple choice questions. So um, I'm going to go through a number of different things today, including a live session. Um, we're active on at Alicia Booth and at IT Masters CSU. So do uh, uh, remember to um, post some comments if you like, either now or after the uh, session or tomorrow. Uh, so we're on week four, that's pretty exciting. Um, we're gonna talk today about Google Analytics uh, on-site search. So when you're typing in a search term on a website and how you can optimize that and how you can analyze that. Uh, we're also looking at how to develop online personas. Um, so you can have a, a really good tone of voice, um, a good um, um, message and really resonate with um, your online customers. Also developing uh, web and digital plans. I know that there was a few people that were asking, how do I develop um, a digital marketing plan and an e-commerce plan? Um, I've got some templates that I actually use um, still to this day that I created a few years ago. So some of those tools will be um, in the learning um, section of the website. So um, we'll post the link to those. I think they're already on there actually from memory guy. Um, and then finally, we'll, we'll do a data studio report. Uh, and that is on the assumption that um, you've created a dummy account, which we'll go through and recap on what Dylan had said last week. Uh, so we'll touch on this at the end of the uh, webinar. Some sources. So let's talk about on-site search. So on-site search optimization is what it's called. And the goal of, of optimization is to increase the engagement and keep people on your website. Um, and the search click-through rate is a metric of that. And so that can be used to track whether you have improved engagement and search experience or not. So you can actually go in and see, and I've got a slide on this in a moment, how um, customers are searching and what, what they're searching for and whether they bounce or they click through or whether they purchase. Um, so on the right here, click through rate for a, a search session is the percentage of results click for a specific search session. For example, if 5,000 visitors use the search um, on your site and 2,500 of them click on a result, then your click-through rate will be 50%. So it's a very simplistic uh, metric. I like to keep things super simple. Okay, so the kind of things that I like to ask my website search data is how frequently do users use the search box? Um, in previous organizations I've worked for, up to 50% of people that hit your homepage or, sorry, um, land on your homepage, um, will undertake a search. People are very time poor and want to get to the point. So um, that's a really important metric to leverage from and, and monitor. So I do encourage um, anyone out there, um, you know, who's wanting to become a digital marketer, the traffic can be, you, should, you can get a lot of traffic, but once the traffic hits the website, it's really important to be able to convert that traffic and keep them on the site. So digital marketing and e-commerce need to work hand in hand on that and provide the data insights um, back to, to digital marketers um, and to be able to improve on the, on the quality of traffic that's coming through as well. Um, so point number two is where do searches begin and end? 
um, are users satisfied with what they had what they actually found so I've got a couple of examples where customers may not be happy with what they found sometimes there's no search result uh, and that's where I look at the data and I say oh that's a really good opportunity to probably map um, a search term to a, to the actual product that we want them to see so more on that later how how do different groups of users search on my site? So you can actually categorize the types of um, users, first time users, um, repeat users, etc. cetera. Um, and what business outcomes result from my users searching my site? So do they, are they meant to fill in a form? Are they meant to purchase? Um, are they meant to download um, an article? So how do you optimize site search, on site search? Um, so you can add a synonym and if users are using a slightly different term, so I've used an example um, for best and less, so if you search for jump, jumpsuit, um, we actually refer to that as romper. So instead of, you know, obviously um, searching for jumpsuit and not getting a result, we actually map that to our romper products and that's because we can see the search volume coming through for jumpsuit. So that's a really cool way to leverage from traffic rather than sort of having in, increasing your bounce rate. Hopefully that's making sense so far. Um, you can also uh, review the meta information. So that's the descriptions and the, and the product title um, to increase your click through rate, uh, which is CTR percent. Um, and you can actually rewrite or update that title and description of your web pages to rank higher on um, on Google search results, but you can also um, increase your um, conversion to a click-through rate by doing so. Um, and the third one is, um, you know, Google actually crawls websites and reads uh, the uh, meta title, meta tags and meta description. So it's really important uh, that you get those right because if someone's searching on Google, um, Google will go through the site and if that, you know, if that romper's not there or that jumpsuit's not there, it won't um, rank you very high on that search term. So it's really important to, um, to be looking at this and to be optimising. Okay, so um, what, is, what is a synonym in context to on-site search? It's a, it's a word or a phrase that means exactly or nearly the same as another word or phrase in the same language. Um, for example, shut is a synonym of close. Um, so it's the same definition for a user undertaking an on-site search. So what, you know, what um, a customer may uh, refer to a product may be different for another person. So using variations of each of those is really important. Um, and, you know, some have different spelling as well, um, depending on whether you're, you know, searching on a global website or not. Um, and another example in point three is um, searching for tracksuit. Uh, whereas um, a, a website may have track pants. Um, so the objective of on-site search is to serve the best possible result. So you can see here the track suit example. Um, this is uh, for best than less website. So track, and this is what you get, track pant. See how there's track pant with a space. There, there's some optimizations that can happen there. And then track suit, you can see here there's no result. So that's a missed opportunity. So what needs to be done is that you actually um, see we've got cam and camera. So we're actually um, using the back end of the website, the Hybris website to actually map this to this track pant. So um, rather than searching a result that has no results and people bouncing, bouncing from the site, Okay, so um, basically we, we use Hybris, which is, um, there's a integration that we use that actually gives really great uh, results um, rather than, you know, um, just not really knowing what customers are experiencing. So products are the main um, searching data in any e-commerce site. And um, the Apache Solar in Hybris is using is used for making faster search on the products of the site. So the diagram on the right um, shows that if someone has searched, and this is what Dylan touched on last week, it actually um, 
yields a quicker result if it's sitting in a in solar rather than in the main database it takes longer to retrieve that so um, this is probably a bit too technical for this course um, but essentially just wanted to tap on to what Dylan said last week um, from a technical um, aspect so I just wanted to um, explain what H1 meta title and meta description means Okay, so Fresh Flowers is a company that I worked for a few years ago. I uh, just wanted to show you a PDP. So it's called a product description page. And, um, you know, basically just how to set up uh, a page with best practice um, to with the objective of increasing conversion or increasing clicks. So point number one is the product name, also referred to H1. Um, and that's really important because it, Google does read that and um, it's really important to have a descriptive product name as well. The actual product description should include product category names in the description. For example, these are a native bouquet of flowers, so you need to probably write that in, uh, in the actual description. Um, so if someone's searching for um, native flowers or as you can see here, Mother's Day and Christmas, uh, that coupled with native flowers will um, probably allow this um, product description page to come up quite high on Google search results. Uh, it's always good to have um, three images and preferably some rich content like video um, and some um, added value here as well. So uh, reviews are also really good to increase um, conversion rate. Uh, just wanted to quickly touch on site errors which um, and URL errors, which does affect your rankings on Google and something that you need to analyze all the time. Um, so there's usually two types. So site errors um, that are across the whole website and then URL errors like error 404 on a specific web page. So imagine um, you know, Valentine's Day is a landing page on your website and then Valentine's Day is done. Um, but because that page has been uh, indexed, it's still uh, what we call link juice. It's still alive um, and people can still click on it. Now, what you would normally do is to redirect that page to, say, the roses category. Um, and if you don't, the customer will get an error 404 and that's not really good news. That means that the page is not found. So it's really important um, to, um, you know, not just shut down a landing page. It's important to leverage from the link juice um, that will, um, that's from SEO um, when you're considering your e-commerce strategy. So there's um, all sorts of um, crawl errors, like, you know, server, server errors. Um, and then, you know, sometimes Google's unable to crawl the site. There's um, some um, failures in, in the bots. Um, so it's just really important to, to track that as well. It's an example. Uh, Google Search Console. I'm not too sure if you're familiar about that. You can see the URL errors here on, on the screenshot. It gives you a list of errors. So maybe some of those pages are not um, are no longer available. So what you would do is you would go into the actual um, disabled page in the back of your website and actually redirect that just so you're not serving an error. So I'm going to take a breath. I'd like to do a poll. Um, so Alrighty. What here got? comes Guy. <laughs> so uh, do we have a, yes, there it is. Do you have this yeah. tool, the Google dummy account? So this is something that Dylan spoke about last week. And if not, is your intention to set one up in the next month? Yeah. Well, we've got plenty. We've got yes, no, and no, not yet, but will. And Good. And saying not yet, but will. Yeah. Uh, and then a fairly even split, actually. Um, okay. Actually use it already and don't. Okay, good, good. It's a really good playing ground. It's it's really good just to navigate um, and just feel like you're not going to make any mistakes. Because um, I know when I first started 10 years ago, um, I was fearful of, you know, there wasn't Google dummy accounts, I don't think, back then, or I wasn't aware of it. So, um, yeah, you just sort of tread carefully. Um, but with this one, you can really, I'm going to show you how to do a... Um, a data studio report, a dashboard um, using Google Analytics. Um, so it's really good to, um, to really give that a crack. 
And okay. I'm going to show you how to set that up. Awesome. 25% um, yes, 30% no, and 45% not yet, but will. Um, also, I've got a couple of questions we might as well yep. get rid of them. Um, Jill asks, why is it called a slug? And I saw a really good answer to that in the chat. Um, It'd be good to know what. So Jerry says a slug is the part of a URL which identifies a particular page on a website yes. in an easy to read form. Correct. And that's, that's it's in name. layman's terms. Yeah. Thanks, yep. Jerry. And Nathan's asked whether dedicated search product vendors provide anything above simple search functionality like CMS integration, jargon alert. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> results weighing and those types of things. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely good. I heard part of that question. Sorry. Um, oh, okay. Uh, do dedicated search product product vendors provide anything above simple search functionality? Yes, yeah, so we use um, Solar, um, which is a, an option that I've used before at um, Fresh Flowers as well. Um, in terms of uh, on-site search, it's really a matter of using the back end of a website, in my opinion, and remapping to the categories or the product, products that you want customers to see. So, um, yeah. And then a final question for now. Uh, James has asked, uh, 301 or 301 redirects bad for your SEO? Bad yes. SEO, SEO in your view? Yes, yes, they are. I think um, it's really important for 301s and 404s um, to be wary of those. And if you go to, if I go back to the slide, uh, to, let me just move this out of the way, um, the search console, it's important if you're working in analytics or digital marketer to just always be checking on that. Because I mean, you do a lot of campaigns and you know, there's a lot going on. So it's, it's quite easy to sort of leave this at the end of the list, but it, it is really important because you paid all that money for people to come to your site. So, so yeah. Beauty, thank you. No problem. Okay. So I wonder, can we do another quick poll with regards to Google annotations? Uh, has anyone used these before? Is there any digital marketers out there that have used this? Uh, let's just relaunch the same poll. Do you use this tool? Uh, yeah. Okay, yes, let's do that. Bit of pressure there, Guy. <laughs> do you have this tool? Do you, do you use uh, annotations? Ooh, much stronger no cohort okay. in this one. Well, that's good. As I in, I can if show we you. <laughs> afterwards, the, there would be a not yet, but will would be a far higher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seventy percent no at this point. We'll just keep going. Okay, that that's one. good. Mm. I think that's good. As in, it's it's going to be useful. It's not really a big deal actually, um, but it actually um, is something that you have like posted notes if you like on Google Analytics, and you know, um, yesterday we launched uh, Click Frenzy. And, and so did another, a number of other retailers. And basically you're just uh, noting that there's a surge in traffic and you're actually putting down the reason why. And I'm gonna show you in a minute what that looks like. It explains spikes and drops in data. So um, imagine that you've never done paid search before and then you start doing paid and then you get a surge in traffic. It's really good to um, actually make a note of that time. So when you look at it a year later, a quarter later, um, you know, you kind of vaguely remember. It's really good just to go back to that data and see the annotation. I've put a link there too. Um, but essentially, um, you can go to any report and see this little drop down um, arrow. That's what you click. And this is um, page views in Google Analytics. And you're actually sort of going, like you can see how it's sort of flatlined there. Um, obviously, there's some sort of problem. Maybe the website went down or something like that. Um, so you can set, a, set up a, a new annotation and enter the date of the event um, and add a small note about what happened, um, which is pretty straightforward. See on the right there, create new annotation. And then you just obviously write down some commentary that relates to that. Um, you can make them public or private as well. Um, it's just really important, you know, like if marketing have done a big TV campaign, for example, um, yeah, like it's just really good to, to have a bit of a history on it. Okay, so um, I just want to quickly go over to um, just want to go 
to, I just want to show you an annotations. Just bear with me. I was meant to have this page ready. So just give me a second. Uh, the internet's being a bit. Yeah. Uh, this is like all going on in the background, is it? Okay. Yep. Just mm. Lots of stuff happening. Okay, so I'm in analytics. I should be in hopefully my. Oops. Okay, so this is my quote unquote dummy account. Oh, we can, um, we can see the slides. Um, so hang on, give me one sec. Let me go to that. Gotcha. Got me? Okay, good. That was probably good because I had some sensitive information up on the screen. <laughs> right. So, yeah. All part good, of the plan. Good, good error. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, this is uh, Google Merchant uh, Merch Center, um, and it is a dummy account. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Um, so, I just want to show you how you can do an annotation. So, imagine you're, you're going to your channels under acquisition. And all you do, I've set up a few earlier on today, I think. Um, so imagine you want to go to this date, the 12th, um, create new annotation, uh, click frenzy event, assuming that the graph's going up. <laughs> um, and so that's pretty much all you do. And then you can make it, you know, you can show it on the, on the graph. So that's as easy as what it is. So I'm just going to switch back to the Prezo. Just give me one moment. And gotcha. Got me? Okay. Okay, great. So uh, now you know how to do annotations. That's a bit of a uh, false build up, but it's actually pretty straightforward. So um, you can go into work tomorrow and say, I'd like to create an annotation. Um, so we're moving on to online personas or personas. Um, so it's really a fictional character that communicates the characteristics of a group of users. So a segment, target market. Uh, you can have primary and secondary, um, even tertiary. Um, and it really helps identify um, your key target through the data and um, it actually, the data will inform um, certain themes about where people live, how old they are, what sex they are, um, what are they interested in. And that's really important to be able to put that together so that you can see what sort of media that they're, they're into. Do they watch YouTube? Do they watch TV? And, and it helps digital marketers and marketers make more informed decisions. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you um, how to put that together. There's three types. Um, well, there's more than that, but generally, you know, you can have a, a quick ad hoc persona. So you can get some data from analytics and, and form an opinion or from Facebook, for example, or from your, your CRM program. Um, and so um, the personas are created through existing knowledge um, of an audience, maybe transactional data as well, um, without any in-depth research. Um, so it could be, a bit of a, an assumption um, but you know in the online only space sometimes that that's done and, and that's sort of really um, test and learn approach I guess. Uh, then there's web design or customer experience personas so if you're developing a, a website um, and you're, you're considering what what do females like what do males like not trying to be too um, controversial here but you know like is there a lot of information required does it, does it need to be just um, pictures? Um, you know, what, what sort of experience do we want to provide that and what information is informing us about that? Um, and, you know, the end goal there is to um, increase um, the online user experience um, and improve results such as time on site, conversion rate, et cetera. Um, and, you know, ideally they incorporate touch point mapping um, to support the purchase decision making um, process. So, um, you know, in previous organisations I've had exit intent 
digital marketing pop-ups come up when you know when you hover over a mouse and you're about to click away so those types of designs are based on seeing a high bounce rate for example on a certain landing page analyzing that data and making decisions is really important uh, marketing personas I think there's a few marketers um, in the audience so they're used to summarize a customer segment based on the characteristics and their perception of the brand it isn't the main focus of the toolkit, but there are some example in this category. So buyer personas and user design personas. Um, you know, a buyer persona helps you understand your customers and pers uh, prospective customers. And it makes you, like, as I said earlier, it makes it easier to create um, relevant content, messaging, and, you know, even develop new products or product extensions. And, um, it services it basically serves to meet specific needs behaviors and concerns and it's it's basic um, objective is to solve uh, problems a user persona is a representation um, of the goals and behavior of a hypothesized group of users um, uh, which can be used for uh, website design and cx customer experience there's a couple of links there for you so where do you find all this data from to create a customer persona? You can look at your database if you have a data warehouse or if you had, have a set of email addresses and information um, sitting in a CRM program. You can layer over that with Facebook Insights, which probably will confirm um, you know, the, the segments or the targets that you're putting together or it may create a, another target. Um, Google Analytics, I'm a big fan of that. It provides really good, meaningful information. And as I mentioned, a, a data warehouse is um, even better because the information can flow between systems. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of um, reports as well and CSU certainly provide a lot of um, surveys and reports. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you use other external resources as well. Um, just an example of Facebook. You can see um, in this example, um, you know, what the percentage is between male and female um, and what the age, I don't know if you can see my mouse on the page, but you can see. Um, yeah, sure can. Oh, good. Okay. So you can see the 25 to 54, you know, potentially you might want to look at what revenue you're getting out of this, the 45 to 54, um, the 16% of that and see how much maybe they spend more because they're, I'm assuming their um, income might be more or or not. So it's just important to maybe dive in, to deep, dive in deeply with, um, for example, how much revenue you might get from, from these three. And you might decide that the, you know, that the 35 to 54 are your target, or you might just decide the 25 to 44 is your target and then develop personas based on that. Or you can have a persona based on the 25 to 34, the 35 to 44, and the 40, 45 to 54, and have several different targets. Um, down the bottom is um, where they're from, um, and specifically what city and what language. Um, this is really just using, uh, uh, this is Facebook again, and, and this is in Business Manager. So you can see uh, women is in the blue and men's in the green, and then you can see the, um, the age, age and gender. I think we just went through that. Uh, engagement, so number of people that are interacting um, on the page. So um, there's 50% of um, women are engaging and sharing and liking, etc., and 42% of them of the 20% of men are also um, pretty high actually. So, so how do you develop them? Many different ways, but I'm gonna show you the way that I've developed them in the past. Seven steps, it can be five steps, it can be three steps, but essentially you can export the data from email. So someone, for example, best and less, if you sign up, um, and be a customer, you actually say, I'm interested in baby clothes, I'm interested in menswear, uh, et cetera. And so that's obviously very factual from that, at that point in time for a customer. Um, you can look at uh, your website data sets. So people who last visited the website, so we're talking about recency. Uh, you can talk about how frequent they are and, and what value. So the customer lifetime value might fit into that um, particular data set. Um, how high they convert. So you might have um, people that convert at 2%. That could be a segment in itself that you focus on, or it could be a revenue-based 
type of um, uh, metric that you're looking at improving. Average time on site um, indicates that they're engaged. Um, monthly website visits. Uh, the other part that I mentioned in point three is social media. You can look at Instagram as well. Um, you can look at your POS data. So that's point of sale data, which um, certainly looked at that um, in all of the businesses that I've worked at, except for the pure play ones like Deals Direct. Um, and you can import uh, the data into a central hub. Obviously I've got app, app insights as well. Um, and you can you know, basically use this information for media selection timing of campaigns, targeting tone of voice and, and product mix. So um, there's more options, but essentially they're the seven steps that I generally would follow. So when you're developing an online persona, you have a, a person, a name, and it's like a fictional pro profile, which I've got an example, a couple of examples of. Um, the background, it may include um, their personal or professional background or both. It can include um, details about their lifestyle, interests, hobbies and education and there can be some assumptions there too. Um, demographics, uh, obviously relevant information about age range, gender, household income and uh, you know, whereabouts they live, are they metro, are they regional etc. Uh, key characteristics, so um, at Saba they were uh, women, women and men, 60-40, um, they were uh, tech savvy, uh, time poor, um, interested in um, YouTube uh, and, you know, going to events, uh, interested in the foodies as well. So, um, so yeah, like it's, it's quite an interesting process to go through. Um, yeah, and you can also define what your online personas are not. In a previous presentation I did in a webinar with uh, Andrew Mashman, I actually, when I was at Saba, put together what our customers are not um, so that we um, didn't waste our time trying to market to them. Uh, some of the goals, uh, what they're hoping to achieve in order of priority, uh, what do they have trouble with? Um, you know, for example, time poor mums, um, what specific points are getting in the way of um, their, these prospects achieving their goals? Uh, and, you know, look, there's, there's so many things that you can put into a um, online persona. I'm gonna just jump into showing you a few. Uh, so this one here, uh, gender demographic information. You can see the gender, job role, marketer, location, Boston. And then you can actually um, see, because you can track this customer if you have a key like an email address or some other unique identifier and see and track when she's um, last visited the website, last purchase date um, and what she actually purchased. Um, in app behavior, she's a high app user, for example, and um, she, at a, added a wish list uh, product, um, and you can see the email interactions and the social media activity, etc. So that's one example. Uh, when I was at Scoopon, we put, we did a survey monkey, um, so surveying our um, cohort of customers, and and we put together the deal queen. So that's Julie, and and she's 55, divorced, two kids government administrator and she lives in Ride. So you can see her goals, her frustrations, her favorite deals and her online behaviors. So it's really easy to communicate to uh, the Julies um, in this particular persona. Um, within Scoopon as well, the adventurous millennial, and that's Lucy, she's 26 years old, she's dating, she's a marketing coordinator. There's lots of marketing people in these personas. Um, but you can see, you know, her goals is to try new things. So maybe she might be interested in a, I don't know, a, a new event that she's never, um, that's quite new in, in Australia, for example. Um, she might, you know, might be a group event um, that she wants to invite her friends to. Um, so yeah, like there's all different, you know, she's got a flooded inbox and so maybe an SMS might be better or um, maybe, you know, uh, we, should, we could remarket to her or target her on, on Facebook or whatever um, social media platform she's on. Um, Is there a grumpy cynic? <laughs> with your, with your pa uh, face on it? <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. Um, I'm not. <laughs> I can create that one. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see it. Let's thing. do a poll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Guy a grumpy cynic? <laughs> oh, you don't come across that way, Guy. I think everyone loves you. So it's That's all so an good. <laughs> um, 
so this this here is actually a good start if you're looking if you haven't done this before but um you know definitely pull pull together the data and and try and uh, bundle key themes and information together where you've got a lot of people with with the same sort of interests or the same location um, but uh, HubSpot um, actually offers quite a um, a self-directed um, make my own persona um, which is pretty cool I actually uh, gave that a bit of a crack the other day so that's another little tool that you can use um, yeah so that that's about it uh, with regards to online personas Let's jump straight into... We've got, we've got one yep. quick question, sorry, uh, from Wayne. Sure. Do we use the, the terms personas and avatars interchangeably or is avatar something different? Uh, you can have an avatar that represents um, a persona as well. So right, that'd be this, like a Lucy, so Lucy an could have an avatar. Yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Good question. Okay, so... There's a lot of information in this next section, uh, but don't worry, the presentation is downloadable and the, the actual spreadsheets I am going to present are usable and um, they will be in the learning um, part of the uh, website. So do check it out. And I'm also happy to answer any questions if you're trying to put together a digital marketing and or e-commerce plan. Um, as mentioned previously, um, his, historical data analysis is really important to um, put together your KPIs. Uh, I look at transactional data and I look at uh, store, store data, I look at social data and I look at EDM, as much data as possible um, uh, when developing uh, KPIs. So Google Analytics, Data Warehouse, CRM, um, dashboards that I've used previously and um, some predictive analysis as well. Um, I like to set up SMART goals um, based on that information and create a mission statement and value proposition. Uh, it's really important to understand the audience, so online and analog personas. So you might find that there's a cohort that shop online and in store, but then there's only, then there may be people who shop online only or in-store only. So it's really important to uh, know that up front uh, to help with your digital marketing efforts or traditional marketing efforts. Uh, situation analysis is really important um, to see what the state of play is, see what the competitors are doing, um, macro and micro factors as well. Uh, and then based on all of that information, uh, developing um, a trading. So I work in retail, so it's all about trading um, and a content plan, um, which is in the form of a, a calendar to achieve goals. Align your team's skills and, and capabilities to achieve those goals and measure and track, optimise and report. And that's on a weekly basis. So just in summary, uh, your budget and, and KPI should use data, uh, set smart goals, including things like revenue assumption, maybe even conversion assumption, you know, um, assess previous marketing campaigns. And, and that's where annotations is really important when you're looking back on, you know, a whole year ago uh, and you're mapping out the coming year, it's really important to know whether you did a, a bonds 40% off sale last year and you're trying to replicate that. And if you're not doing that, then what else are you doing to achieve your goals? Um, assess website mobile performance, align last activity and replace new activity, so um, marketplaces, etc. And um, I'm a really big fan of innovating and, and doing new things and uh, having that competitive advantage. So do your research, study your competitors and um, see what sort of cool things they're doing in the digital marketing world and the e-commerce world. So your strategy is how, how are you going to achieve your um, objectives and the tactics is when, um, and then obviously allocating a, an approved budget is really important. Uh, you've got to set KPIs based on what success looks like. So in order to do that, you've got to look at what what was success last year? Was it, was it successful? Is it achievable? Um, you know, looking at that historical data is really important um, as a line in the sand that you can improve on um, or benchmark as, you know, a flat growth, for example, just depending on your objectives. And things like um, ROAS, um, return on ad spend, traffic, uh, conversion, so e-commerce conversion, cart conversion, 
Um, and um, yeah, the seventh one is um, track, measure and optimize. Uh, so these are just some ideas. Uh, certainly I don't use them all at once, but um, I'll call out a few. Uh, we talked about customer lifetime value at the beginning of the year. You might want to say, well, you know, a customer is worth $250. Um, I want that to be $500 by the end of the year. So then you work out a process and a strategy that actually increases the um, average order value, for example, or the frequency a customer comes back to your site. Um, you might want to uh, look at comparative data in Google Analytics, your data warehouse, your mail provider, and actually just have a, a flat 20% increase in traffic, for example, uh, year on year. Um, uh, what else can I look at? Um, you know, average transactional value, point number eight, ATV. Number of arts per order could also increase your revenue. So, you know, upsell and cross-sell at the point of purchase. Things like personalised website will definitely increase conversion rate, um, especially if they're a loyal member and you're serving them a loyalty gift voucher online. Um, so there's just some ideas. Um, when you look at point number 12, maybe... Um, Maybe you're looking at increasing your subscribers or maybe you're looking at getting more out of your customers um, in terms of your open rates and your click-through rates. Um, and perhaps your deliverability reports need to improve. Um, so making sure that you're, uh, you've got good, um, rate, uh, good rankings when you're delivering your EDMs. Uh, overall percentage increase on traffic, conversion and revenue are, are my key go-tos. Um, I use a cost of sale, which is number 15, cost, of 5, five to 10% of revenue as a rule. And that's assuming that you've got a robust team in place. So that 5% is the expenses, the digital marketing spend. Uh, I've put this slide in here just to give you, um, you know, obviously marketing KPIs, email KPIs, SEO KPIs, pay per click, social media and website. So there, I thought that that was a really good uh, table by the Content Marketing Institute. Um, and, and definitely there's way more than that. But when you're developing uh, a budget and KPIs, just keep it really, really simple. I've got this uh, template in the, the learning part of the website. So feel free to download that. Essentially, you're looking at um, your source and medium. So um, how much, uh, how many users came to your site within a certain period? Um, what was the sessions and bounce rate? Um, but it's, you know, this is probably an over information. This is where I go a little bit deeper where I'm looking for a certain improvement, for example, with regards to, um, you know, Facebook referral. You know, um, I'm just looking at partnerships and I'm just wanting to know that referrals work really well for us. So I'm looking at what did we do last year and what are the benchmarks? Uh, you can see Bing right down the bottom of the page here, cost per click. Uh, and, you know, in that example, you might go, right, okay, per month we we're getting $5,000 in revenue. I want to see like a 30% increase. So I just want to double check how much did we earn last year and how many users did we need and what was the e-commerce conversion rate for that particular channel. So each channel will not be the same, e, you know, e-commerce conversion rate. It won't be the same number of users. So this is a, I guess, a next drill down level of actually looking at your digital performance channels. I've got an example here um, on what I use roughly when you're developing SMART goals and the information in here is uh, fictional. So, um, so yeah, like it's, it's really just to illustrate how to complete it. I haven't completed it at all, but um, number one is, you know, KPIs for F19 was um, 30,000 um, per month and we're going to increase that to 39. So that would be a KPI and how you're going to achieve that. So if you, if you did the same thing as you did the previous year, it'd probably be less than 30,000. So you need to be able to go to paid search, obviously look here what paid search was last year and go, yeah, I think it's realistic based on the kind of paid search will contribute to um, part of the 9,000 additional traffic um, per month. Um, and, you know, like what actions will you take? So we're going to analyze the keywords. We're going to analyze the source, which is what we're doing here. 
Uh, so if you read through all of this, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we can look at average order value, for example, $43. Um, we want to want to go up to 50 and, and how how you achieve this using e-commerce and digital strategy bundling up sell and cross sell maybe the exit intent um, as well um, yeah so new subscribers etc and so on and so forth uh, this is again uh, not real numbers but you can see there's some there'll be some errors here as well but um, this is the kind of budget that I would typically put together. Um, my budget in this case is looking at a ROAS, so return on ad spend. I will say when you're looking at ROAS is to look for cost per acquisition because you might be getting $20 based on every dollar spent, but the actual cost may be Seventy dollars when you know when the when the product's only worth twenty nine dollars. So it's really important to have those figures um, and have that context. Uh, obviously, with this um, spreadsheet, I'm I'm quite confident about using just ROAS, um, and that would be based on doing historical research. And I've actually stripped out um, the the CPA because I've already done that um, research. Um, and so you can see uh, this is also a downloadable template with um, formulas in it. Uh, you can see at the top line um, revenue, your revenue numbers for the year and how much you're going to spend. And that's where you can get your um, how many times the 2.4 million go into 46.5 million and that's your cost of sale. <coughs> and then obviously I've just simply copied down the revenue and then my, my working sheet is okay. Um, of that three million, how much is going to be attributable to brand revenue? And so when you look at brand revenue, you go, okay, I'm going to do paid brand search and that's going to give me uh, X percent of that three million and the rest will be non-brand uh, non revenue. So that could be affiliates. Um, I think I've got remarketing, uh, Bing. You can do brand and, and non-brand within Bing, but um, you know, you might, might do partnerships, uh, you might do generic search, um, but you can see there I've made a commitment to brand and non-brand, so the 68 and the 27, um, and Facebook paid advertising. Uh, sorry, uh, when well you've got EDM, I've got all the agency costs here as well, and then I've got EDM, um, and the EDMs would be based on historical data, and you can decide whether you're going to increase uh, your your performance of your EDM program and that wouldn't be by doing nothing it would be by you know maybe doing some trigger based emails and actually forecasting what you think that you'll get back on that or you can just say look worst case scenario I'm going to get 2000 um, as, as you can see here again not real data SEO so um, when you look at Google Analytics, you can see how much traffic you're getting from SEO of that traffic, how much bounces and then how much converts and then a revenue number. So uh, the SEO, unless you're doing a big SEO project like, you know, changing the meta descriptions and the metadata uh, backlink strategy, uh, you can increase SEO if you're doing that sort of stuff. But if you're not doing anything, uh, you probably just need to base that on what, what your performance was previously. But either way, you need to benchmark how you've been performing over, I would say, six months to preferably over 12 month period. And that's where annotations is really important because if there's been a site drop or there's been brand new activity, it can actually change the result. Um, change the average, I guess. Um, so just be wary of that. Um, an example here is a website forecast. So that's um, in my mind traffic and conversion improvement. So for retail, usually that's pretty consistent. So you can look at you know what your sales um, are going to be. Uh, what traffic do you need to achieve that based on a conversion rate of X? In this case, if you look at January. You know, we need uh, uh, a couple of factors. We need um, conversion rate. We need average transaction value. Um, so, and we also need um, your traffic number. So, uh, again, this is downloadable from the learning um, learning part of the website. I've left uh, in the yellow there for you to give that a crack. Um, yeah, so it'd be a good 
good for you to trial that. A strategy would be developed, you know, if you look at conversion rate, if the previous year in January it was two, uh, you would need to put together some really robust e-commerce, um, you know, engagement strategies or um, some development that would improve, um, I guess, the customer experience. Um, in terms of the traffic number, if, you know, last year it was 900,000, um, you'd probably say, well, I'll probably need to do some more paid search or I'll probably, maybe I'll do a PR online, some public relations or, you know, um, maybe I'll do some um, dynamic uh, Facebook advertising, something that I haven't done last year. And again, you'd need to look at what you've done last year in terms of the marketing and looking in annotations is really important because you can actually see what you've done. Typically, marketers will have a, a calendar for the previous year anyway, and their forecast would be based on that. Cool. Moving on, how are we going for time? Oh, nearly there. Okay, this will, won't take me long. Um, so, creating a data studio report is, is a dashboard with all different types of metrics in it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that tonight. And um, I'd really like for you to give it a go if you can. Um, so you must have a Google Analytics account, so just a dummy account that Dylan mentioned last week. Uh, you also need a Google um, account login as well. So you can easily set that up. Um, you click the access demo account when you're setting up um, your dummy account and that's what it looks like. So um, again, if you can refer to Dilhan's uh, video from last week, um, it's pretty much a three step process. Uh, so you can use, um, you can link up a number of different things, but it actually shows data from um, an e-commerce website. It's useful for exploring Google Analytics and, and just gets you used to navigating through um, the reports. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So I'm just gonna play a video uh, just to break it up a little bit. Probably only got about sort of eight minutes left. Just bear with me. Uh, yeah. Are we good with that? All good guy? Yep, can see the video. Can see, yep. And here. Yeah, I think uh, we can't hear the audio, Alicia. Okay. We got the... Just give me a sec. Oh, here we go. Two. Hang on. My bad. It was just a bit boring anyway at the beginning. It's very <laughs> easy to get started um, in Data Studio. Let me walk you through how easy it is. So on the home screen, we have seven templates. Uh, we have templates for Google Analytics, Words, Sheets, and YouTube data. So to use a template, all you have to do is come in here, click on the, uh, for instance, this one is the Google Analytics template. So here we have uh, a professionally designed template that our designers created along with some sample Google Analytics data. To use this template, just simply click on use template, um, come in, create a new data source. I've already created a Google Analytics data source. Uh, click create report. And what's going on in the background right here is we're going through all of the different charts and graphs and we're replacing the sample data uh, with your data. So now we have this sample report and uh, we actually can edit this so we can take out the sample report. Um, if we had a different logo, we could put a new logo on here, um, change the data. Let's say we didn't want sessions, but we wanted new users. And just like that, we have a new report um, with our own data in it that we can now share with our users. And the coolest thing actually is that it's not just limited to these templates that we've created, but any report can now be a template. Um, so one of my colleagues uh, created this data source Rex Google Analytics dashboard. And so if I wanted to use this dashboard with my own data, all I would have to do is click file, make a copy, uh, swap in my data and create a new report. 
And now, um, uh, this report that Data Source Rex has created, um, I am now using with my own data. So any report that's created with an organization now can simply be swapped in with new data. That's really cool. Uh, Dave, you showed us how to use the seven templates that are available already in Data Studio, as well as how to create your own template by making a copy of any dashboard that you love and want to reuse again. So thank you um, for joining us today, and thank you guys for listening. Okay, okay well, hopefully. <laughs> Very American. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So, do you recommend it's... other videos of theirs? Uh, not really. Over. Not okay. <laughs> this is a good yes, one. Yes, I do. It's just the American accent. No offense to anyone in America. George. <laughs> and, and also, my accent, my accent is so Aussie. So they I don't know what too. you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, don't know. <laughs> um, so we can still yeah, see so the YouTube video. Oh, you can still see that? Okay, yep. sorry. <laughs> Courtney wants to he just had Botox in the chat. That's a very interesting question. Oh. <laughs> and, that, and Cameron reckons Dave looks thrilled I think to I be need there. It. This is good stuff. <laughs> Enjoy the chat log when we put that up there later, folks. Oh my God, that's another another topic altogether. Uh, can you see my screen now, everybody? Sure, I can. Excellent, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so let's just keep moving. Yes, yeah, so I've actually just put down some steps here that I'm going to just show you. Um, so you go to Data Studio. Um, this is to create your Data Studio report, which again is just a dashboard. Uh, you've got to link your uh, data source and that's why you need the, the dummy account, if that makes sense, because that's where the data is getting pulled from. Uh, get started, nice and easy. Uh, so you can see here I've selected Google Analytics um, and that's the source of the data. And you've got to allow that and authorize it. And I've got a couple of different businesses, but the demo account is the one that's a dummy account, the Google Merchandise Store, and I'm clicking on Master View. And that's the way it should be set up. Um, once you give it a crack, um, if you have any problems, feel free to post a question as well. So this is some of the information that you will see. There's a lot of data. So those of you who are not comfortable with data, don't freak out. It's pretty intuitive. Um, so here I'm just creating a report so you can see where that's circled. Um, you're about to add the data. So it's adding uh, Google Analytics. Now this is pretty straightforward. You can see on the right, there's all the data sets here um, that's linking from uh, Google Analytics and um, I will show you how to do this as well in a moment. But you can see here uh, medium and page view. I think that defaults to, uh, to that, but you can actually change if you go down to data um, dimension and metrics, you can actually change that over, but have a play around with it. Um, here I'm just adding a graph. I just changed this into a graph. So you, it's pretty, pretty exciting, I, I think anyway. Um, I've changed the background here. You can use all different design types and layouts. Um, and you can see here I'm adding, adding a chart. I've changed it to a black background. Uh, you can add your um, scorecards in, which is um, pretty much a default um, option. I'll show you that in a second. You can blend data as well. So average time on site by medium. Um, and you can actually blend a couple of different points of data. So you can see point number one is add, add a chart. Um, two is to actually um, blend the data from the master view and then you save it. Um, just some other examples of what it can look like. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go straight back into it. Hopefully it will be a-okay. Just give me one second. Sorry, I'm a bit clunky tonight, I'm afraid. Uh, just give me a moment. So, okay. Can you see my screen, the data studio loading? Yeah, it's just coming up now. Okay. And I'm just going to quickly go through the... those 
steps and then we'll be done. Okay. And I've been looking for the American town with an <laughs> accent that is really thick Scottish. <laughs> I saw it once. Really? Is yeah. there a town? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, just quickly, actually, I just need to log in. There's someone else. This is very with me. Everyone knows my email now. It's great. Sorry, guys. No okay, here we go. So uh, just a note on that, if you have got a Google account that you signed into, like obviously I had best and less there, you just need to do exactly what I just did, just to log out and add a new account. So I'm just gonna show you um, dummy report that I put together. So you can name that report and it's gonna change it to lowercase. Um, edit. Let's change the title, for example. Um, you can share it as well. Um, oops. Okay, going back. So imagine you're gonna do a new report. Okay, so create, we've already done that, this is a data source. We're gonna just create a new report. Data source is master view. Add to report. Okay, just give it a second. Good. I'm going to click on that. Okay. So you can see that's a table. Hopefully you can see my mouse. So imagine you wanted that to look something prettier. Could change that. I might do a pie. May not be enough. To Still pi. Hmm, it's not liking my data. Nope. Okay. So page views, uh, you can see over here you can add sessions. Uh, just get rid of this. Uh, you can click on this button here. It's a bit of a lag actually. Uh, so you can put all different, um, you know, different charts, pivot tables, bullets, tree maps. So just have a bit of a play with it, but um, you can see session, you can place that as well. Uh, just let me show you the styles that you can have. Oh, okay. Oh, it's not showing me the styles, which is interesting. What sort of stuff is normally in there? Here we go. Oh, I just had to mm. click outside of that box. Oh, so right, okay. Everything that's clicked on is relevant to that box. Mm. Um, so if you click out just onto here, it gives you different styles. So you can have a black background um, or different types. So, um, so yeah, that's essentially what you can do. Um, and it brings in the data from Google Analytics. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, if you can collate all that information, you can add actually data from Excel spreadsheets as well. So if you've got some EDM data that you're uh, wanting to include, you can actually upload that as well. Uh, oh, you can cool. have, Sam, have multiple asking pages. That. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, whether you can yeah, make so non-Google product data into the yep. studio. Yeah, cool. Yep, you can look at uh, you can link Facebook as well. So I believe you've got to do a download, um, but and then an upload. So um, so yeah, and then obviously once you're um, once you're done, you can actually uh, view it. So this one here that I prepared earlier, probably a better looking one. Almost there, people. <laughs> 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 oh, that one's nice. Okay. 
still loading. Uh, so I'm going to choose a date range. Where are we? Oops, forced to the, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. I should be able to update. There was a map in there as well, but I don't know what's happened there. It's, um, but anyway, yeah, that's um, something that you can have a bit of a play around with. Um, you can put a title in as well. But yeah, that's about it really. Um, there's more information in the in the slides. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen again. Got the slides. Got it. Yeah. I see there's a poll live session question mark. What's that about? Uh, I think we asked it earlier. So oh, I think we're done. Yeah. Um, so did you want to talk about the exam guy? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, Yep. Yeah, people want to hear it. Okay. Uh, so the, the exam is something definitely not to be worried about. Uh, there's plenty of, uh, there's four presentations of which all the answers are in. Uh, there's also um, some, there's a glossary of terms. So I'm going to add a few more pieces of information. Make sure um, if you can watch the videos, um, skip past the bits where I'm trying to transition between slides. Um, <laughs> If you've, if you've taken any notes, um, make sure you read through those and just, you know, practice some of those ROAS and, um, you know, some of those calculations, which are pretty simple. Um, things like customer lifetime value will be in there. So make sure, you know, you've got a calculator handy. Um, and, you know, I do encourage you to try and do it over the next couple of weeks. Um, it shouldn't take any longer than an hour. I've actually got three of the questions in the next slide. So need a bit of a drum roll <laughs> because it's actually um, it's actually not a really extremely hard exam it's just to see you know um, just how you're going and make, making sure that you're confident with what you've learned in the course so you can see here what does uh, ROAS mean and it's a multiple choice the whole exam is multiple choice um, and just choose the most appropriate answer um, number two is what is a tagging method for tracking EDM campaigns? Um, so some of these should pretty much come to you pretty quickly, uh, which are not performance met metrics. Um, so yeah, just read the question properly and uh, you should go really well. And that's all, that's all I've got for the session. Okay, um, I might pinch the screen and, and go over a couple Great. of things as well about the exam. Yeah, let's see if I can actually do it properly. Can I sure can you I take can. it from me? Yep. You should be able to. So you should be able to see. Yep. Can do. The course page. Yep. Um, so as you can see, um, yeah, as Alicia was saying, yep, we've got a, a time limit of an hour, and you only get one attempt. We used to say, all right, well, we'll have the exam period of, of one week. Um, um, and you have to have your attempt then and then you can try the exam as many times as you like. But now, because all of the short courses are open forever, we just say one attempt. So make sure you do the study you need to beforehand. Um, if you have any issues in terms of like tech issues, feel free to email us and we can provide a reset. But um, yeah, make sure you're ready. Um, so 40 questions, 50% pass mark, one hour limit. Um, and you can use any of the resources that's open book. Of course, we can't police that. And of course, you have to complete all of the weekly quizzes um, to, to unlock the exam. And then once we uh, grade the exam properly, um, we'll have to have a look and make sure there's no questions with you know, crazy answers or, or things that we've put, put in wrong. Um, once we sort all that out, that'll be within a couple of weeks, um, we'll release the certificates of achievement. We'll remind you, sort of every week after the after tonight to, to do the exam, we sort of say, jump on it while the content's fresh in your brain. Um, so that's pretty important. Um, but yeah, the, the, the exam realistically will be open for forever. Um, so I've got a little run sheet here as well. You can still see my internet screen, is that right? Alicia? Yep. Beauty. So, um, so that's the exam. Once you finish the course, um, I'd really appreciate if you went in and had a look at the course satisfaction survey. It's just a series of short questions to 
basically help us improve or, or sort of see how we're tracking um, any long form answers as to suggestions as to how we can improve these courses that are always gratefully received and they have resulted in changes in the past. So um, feel free to, to go for it, all anonymized of course. Um, and then I guess the next question is sort of figure out whether this is the sort of content you're after to take the next step in your career or just to have a bit of fun learning. Um, as we've said, all course, it's part of the Master of Applied Digital Marketing or the Grad Cert, if, it, if that's probably more appropriate. Um, so this, is the, this short course talks about digital marketing analytics and is closely related to this subject, which will be running in March. But there's a bunch of other ones as well. Um, this is a fairly uh, dense subject. There's a, there's a lot of content here, as you might have seen. Um, it's quite difficult to condense it into four weeks. So it's, it's been a remarkable job. Well done, Alicia. But um, there's all sorts of other subjects. You, you can look at the core subject that everyone will have to do. It's digital and social media marketing, which is uh, something very closely related to what Andrew Mashman was talking about a little while ago in a short course um, and then there's you know a, a academic theory sort of subject either marketing management or customer behavior i like the sound of them and then you can learn how to set it up on the social platforms as well um, so learn how to do the setting up and then learn how to analyze what you've been doing at the same time it's a it's a nice little course if you're keen um if we've piqued your interest if you want to learn some more um, you can apply anytime. We've got intakes November, January, March, throughout the year, really. And if you want to find out whether you're eligible, then you can click on this little link here down there and you can fill this form out. It'll just sort of chuck your name in, chuck your history in, and then either the lovely Neil McCosh or I will have a chat to you and talk about your options. You can see digital marketing stream down there. Yeah, and basically we give you a good idea of, you know, how much credit you'd stand, whether you're eligible into the course, it's more than likely that you will be. If you've done a marketing master's before, you, there might be scope for getting a lot of credit as well. So that's if you're keen. Otherwise, you know, hope you've enjoyed the short course. Um, thanks so much for coming along and thanks so much to Leif and Chantelle and Rebecca for making it all possible. Um, if you want to pinch the screen back, Alicia, and sign us out. Thank you so much for the short course. It was a, a lovely chance to to have a full course with you and thanks for sourcing such amazing guest lecturers as well um, yes i was very happy with people oh. love to still home yes we'll have to bring and, him and back Dom. yeah yeah <laughs> he was amazing yeah he well, is amazing well, you got this short yeah. course because you were so good in the mashman course maybe he can do the same um, yeah i've already asked him <laughs> so yeah okay. so yeah he's amazing so i'm sure everyone agrees um i'm seeing a lot of thanks there from um, a few people which is great um there was a question about cloud score as well i just noticed um, um so cloud score if you type in cloud score with a k you know, uh, K L O U T. It's a um, it measures your your own um, uh, size size of your social network, and it actually gives you a, a mark out of a hundred. It's pretty hardcore, um, and it basically measures um, the content that you're posting and the interaction that you have um, through your networks. Um, I know that Justin Bieber. I read. I think he has 42, but Obama has 99, which is like the highest score besides 100. Um, but do a little bit of research with that. That's a bit of a fun thing. Um, really good question. I talked about that a couple of years ago. So it's something that I haven't used for at least a year. Um, but yeah, it's still good to know that it's around. Um, it's a bit of a fun thing, but um, but yeah, try check it out. Um, and nice just on that, thanks very much for... Um, for listening and I hope you've found the content useful and importantly some of the some of the theory and the and more so the application of the theory in real life examples really useful and that's certainly when I was studying at CSU myself doing my masters in marketing I found that really useful and that's my connection to Andrew Mashman he used to be my lecturer um, so back in 2011 when I was at Saba so um, 
so it's a great university. Um, I was pregnant with my son when I first started started studying, and um, you know, back to work after three months. So I found um, doing a distance course. And my master's degree was um, highly convenient. Um, often um, working through feeds and um, childcare and, and working full time. So um, I definitely think those mums and dads out there that are going, oh, I don't know, uh, I think it's really worth uh, doing it. And, and Charles uh, makes the study really easy um, and supported. So um, I highly encourage it. And, you know, like I come back and do webinars because I really enjoy giving back um, because the university's given me so much. So just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. And good night, everyone. Bye, everyone.